Hello everyone! Welcome to Chalcogen's Guide to the 3.4 Floor 12 Abyss. For the first half, I will bring Hu Tao Double Hydro. For the second half, I will bring Child International. In each of these chambers, the first half generally favours single target more than the second half. There aren't many shields to watch out for besides the Abyss Mages, which can be dealt with with Animo, and the Overseer Network, which has an invisibility state that can be deactivated with Electro. But any strong single target team can get rid of it just fine. On the second chamber though, the Consecrated Beasts in the first half are really aggressive, so it's recommended you bring a Shielder or Healer. In this case, I have Strong Lead. I'll pick the max HP card to increase the damage of my Hu Tao and my Ye Lan. For the first chamber, we encounter Rune Guards, Rune Drakes, and Dragon Spine Rune Guards. These Rune Monsters spawn in an anti-clockwise fashion around the central Electro node, which gives them an Electro buff that increases their defense every 15 seconds. You can remove the Electro on them using Pyro or Cryo, but in general these enemies will spawn in an anti-clockwise manner, allowing a single target team to make short work of them anyway. So the sequence is one Rune Guard, followed by one Rune Drake, followed by another Rune Guard, followed by the Dragon Spine Rune Guard. second half starts off with Warp of Flowers. I use Child to apply Hydro, followed by Kazuha to swirl the Hydro, Bennett to apply Pyro and then Kazuha to swirl the Pyro and the Hydro so that both of their resistances are decreased by my Viridescent Venera set. Next wave of enemy, 3 Abyss Mages. One Pyro, one Cryo, one Electro. So my child is still on cooldown, so I can't be using him to break the Pyro Abyss Mage's shield yet. The Achilles Seal is going to be a Nemo character, since that can bring down the shields. Final wave of enemies are these Aramites. They can all be sucked in by a Nemo characters and then easily destroyed by an AoE team. Since I have 50 seconds left, I'll take a bit of time to regenerate energy for the next chamber. I'm going to pick Burst Damage, since that will help my international team in the second half. The first wave of enemies will be Samurais, which can be taken down easily in a single target manner, since there are only two of these Nobushi and one Electro Kairagi. Now the second wave of enemies is where things get interesting because we have the new Consecrated Beast from the Sumeru Desert. These creatures are really aggressive, even more so than the Geovis Haps, and they have a lot of health too. You can trigger them to enter a phagocytic state, where they are weakened, when they spawn a little crystal with the element that corresponds to them. Hit that crystal with its corresponding element, which means Pyro is hit by Pyro, Electro is hit by Electro, and that will quickly paralyze the enemies and reduce all their resistances. If not, you can still choose to take them down the conventional manner, but they have got about as much health as a Rift Hound, which will mean it takes some time.
For the second half, we have the three Magu Kenki. I'm just recharging a bit of stamina before I begin the chamber. Apply Hydro with Child, apply Pyro with the Net, and slow them all with Kazuha. You want to stick as close as possible to the Animo dude, because he is the one who will dodge away from you and launch long range attacks. The other two, which is the Cryo and the Mask dude, will move towards you as the battle proceeds so you don't need to worry about them. So staying close to the Animo Samurai is the best way to ensure that they're all clumped up together. Here you see me running around because I want to spend some time regenerating energy instead of killing these samurai too quickly. That's it for chamber 2. Overseer Network begins with a short phase of vulnerability and you can decrease it to about 80% HP in this phase. After which, it will spawn these little robots which don't have shield gauge units but they have HP equal to 10% of the machine HP which makes about 200,000 HP. Once they're down, you should be able to observe the machine based on any markings you leave on it, like Foothouse Blood Blossom. Um, I think that any resistance shreds like Zhongli's shield also show up on this creature. Once that's down, you have an extended phase of DPS longer than the first one, during which you can take him down to about 10% HP, or even straight up KO him if you have enough damage. Once that's done, you can still see Hutas Blood Blossom on the machine, but it has got increased resistance as well while it's invisible, so don't bother trying to DPS it down just because you know its location. Once it has been taken down, we still have 1 minute and 50 seconds left for the second half of Chamber 3. The first wave of enemies are just 3 normal Aramites. These guys can be pulled in by Animal Suction and have lower HP in general, so they are easy to deal with. Try not to spend too long on these ones. The main nuisance comes in the second half with three Aramites that spawn creatures. And as you can see, they are spaced out very far apart and cannot be pulled in by a Nemo. The order in which you target them doesn't really matter, but I usually like to take down the animals first because this will reduce the resistance of their owner, making it easier to take them down. So now all three animals are down, causing their owners to become slightly stunned. That's it for floor 12, 36 star